So, before I start, let me ask, how many of you already know what is refi? Raise your hand. Nobody, okay, then I'm in the right place. So, you hear a lot of people talking about sustainability, about how we should care about our environment, about how we should have diversity and care about the social impact and so on. But do people really care about sustainability? Mm, some do, many don't. Imagine the situation. Imagine there is a really profitable uh, stock and you are sure that if you buy it, you will be a billionaire in seconds. But it might have some negative effects on humanity. I mean, it might have pollute the air or it might like be against um, some human rights. Would you invest in it? Raise your hand if you would. I see some people who are raising hands. You see? When it comes to profit, when it comes to money, it doesn't really matter how sustainable it is. People will follow it. But what if we could get profit as we were helping the environment? What if we would get money as we were doing something good for the society? This is what Refi is trying to do. Refi is trying to automate good actions so that when people do something towards sustainability, they will get some kind of incentive, they will get some kind of profit. So when you get profit, then why not? You will move towards sustainability. So ReFi, can you get back to this? <laughs> Thank you. So ReFi has some specific characteristics. It is some tools and some ideas on top of blockchain that, use, that are used to create an ecosystem which moves toward financial inclusion, social impact, and a more sustainable ecosystem for everyone. Now I can go to the next. Cool. So do you think sustainability and regeneration are the same? Many people confuse these concepts, but they are not the same. So when we talk about degeneration, the red one, it refers to economies which just use, they just consume, and they don't generate anything. Unfortunately, we are living in a degenerative world. Right now, we have already passed six planetary boundaries. Humans are in danger, and nobody cares about it. In a degenerative economy, we just consume, and at the end, everything will collapse. It's self-terminating. We will terminate our own society and our economy. Then we have sustainability. Sustainability is better. I mean, when we are living in a degenerative economy, if we just put one step towards sustainability, that's better than nothing. But that should not be the ultimate goal. The ultimate goal should be regeneration. So when we talk about sustainability, it means using and consuming to a specific limit, not more. Just using until you know that, okay, I'm not gonna make a lot of damage to the resources. But when we go to regeneration, it's a whole new level that's completely different and it's going to make the ecosystems blossom. Next slide, please. Inclusive finance and social impact are two areas of refi. We've already talked about inclusive finance in the discussion panel that we had earlier this morning. So inclusive finance and social impact refer to caring about people who are less privileged, people who maybe don't have enough money, who were born in some countries with less infrastructure, they don't have the chance to have a bank account, or they don't have the chance to have insurance or credit or something like that. And social impact is when you do something that affects the society towards a good way. So any kind of project, which use some kind of financial system like blockchain and is moving towards helping societies and including more people into the financial ecosystem can be considered a refi project. Next slide, please. So now I want to make some examples about refi projects, but before I do that, I want to go a little deep into tokenization so that you understand the examples better. Tokenization means creating a representation of an asset on the blockchain. You can tokenize anything. You can tokenize real estate, you can tokenize art, you can tokenize music licenses, anything that you can imagine can be tokenized. For example, here, what you see 
is the platform of Finexity. Finexity is one of our uh, portfolio companies. Our company has invested in Finexity. And Finexity makes it possible for people to invest in assets which might be impossible to invest in in the in normal way because they are too expensive. But using tokenization, you will be able to buy a fraction of that asset. For example, imagine there is a very expensive house and you are sure that in, for example, a year, it's going to get so much more expensive. The price is going to get doubled or tripled, but you don't have enough money to buy it. And you really want to do this investment. Thanks to tokenization, you can buy a fraction of that asset. You can make your profit and then get out of that position without having the whole asset. So this is what tokenization is. Next slide, please. So one of the really um, known parts of refi and refi projects are tokenization of carbon credits. But what are carbon credits? Does anybody know what are carbon credits? So, oh, some people know, okay. So, companies which do productions, they usually have greenhouse gases emissions. They usually pollute the air, or they um, create some kind of chemicals which is not good for the environment. Carbon credits are credited to these companies so that they can do these emissions up to a specific limit. If they want to have more productions and create more pollution, they have to pay and buy more carbon credits. But maybe a company doesn't want to produce so much for a year and they don't create a lot of pollution, so they will have some excessive carbon credits that they have used. They can't sell these carbon credits to another company which needs it. So good action is getting automated. By not polluting the air, you will get money. So this is how you can use tokenization of carbon credits as a refi project to help the environment. Here you can see some examples of refi projects. Here are the logos of some companies which are related to blockchain or related to regenerative finance. For example, Moss Earth, which you see at the top, this is a carbon bridge. It helps tokenize carbon credits to the carbon credits to come to the blockchain on top of blockchain. Or here down there we have Refi DAO. First of all, let me explain DAO. DAO is the abbreviation of the centralized autonomous organizations. It means there is no authority, there is no CEO, there is no one to control it. Everybody in the economy, everybody in the network can decide and vote on whatever that network is trying to do. And Refi DAO is trying to move forward to help the Refi ecosystem, to help the Refi projects. And for example, we have Epic Hub. Epic Hub is a project which is focused on farmers. For example, farmers who are of really far villages and they don't have money, they create some kind of yield generation for the farmers and they help the farmers to sell their crops directly to the market. So it's going to be somehow under the category of financial inclusion because they are making financial markets accessible for people who are not privileged to have access to them. Next slide, please. So there are some projects which are using blockchain technology to help refugees. And because refugees are less privileged people, when you do anything related to blockchain and finance to help them, it will go under the category of refi. For example, we have Building Blocks by World Food Program. In this program, which is happening in Pakistan and in Jordan, for example, in Pakistan, they will use blockchain to uh, have a record of all the information of the refugees, all the cash-based transactions, all the identity and supply chain information. Everything is getting stored on the blockchain. And in Jordan, they will uh, use something to record how groceries have been bought by the refugees so that they can get access to the World Series more easier without holding cash. They can have a system which will scan the eye of the refugees and they will have the record of how many World Series they have bought this month or how many they have left and they will just get it without having cash or money with themselves. Then we have uh, the UN Refugee Agency. You can see the logo of Cardano right next to it. Cardano is a blockchain and its native token is ADA. The UN Refugee Agency used 
staking pools. They use staking pools of other to help less privileged people. Staking pools are um, like when you use your tokens, you lock your tokens in the network to do the validations of the infrastructure, the, to do the um, validation of the network. And if you are someone who wants to help the refugees, you can dedicate your tokens to that staking pool. And then when there is any kind of benefits, it will be given to the refugees. Another example that we have here is bus money. Bus money is used in Africa, and it's a kind of virtual banks for people who have no bank account. And when they want to immigrate to another country as refugee, they will not need to carry the cash or have any kind of bank account. They can easily use the virtual banking system. Next slide, please. So now I want to introduce you to the program, which was my entrance to the ReFi ecosystem. It's called ReFi Talents, and it's supported by the Frankfurt School of Finance and Management. It's a free course. You can definitely join the next cohort. I think it will start in June. And it's a really great opportunity for you to learn more about ReFi and to get to know other people who are pioneers in this industry, who have already done something in the blockchain industry or in the ReFi industry. And you can see the logos of some companies. These companies are uh, supporting this program, so that's why it's free and you don't have to pay for it. I really recommend it. It's going to be really adding value to your resume when you get the certificate. Next slide, please. So, if you want to get to know more information about our company, about Coinix, please visit our website, coinix.capital. If you have any questions, if you want to um, talk to me about anything, just write my name on LinkedIn, Maxwell Dorfberg. You will find my LinkedIn account. Just write me, text me. I'm going to answer all of your questions. And thank you for listening to my keynote.